Lesson 18. Take the bull by the horns. Welcome to Lesson 18. Take the bull by the horns. In this lesson, you will hear Brad encourage Stephen to go for a position that has opened up in their company. Listen for the idioms and see if you can understand all the ones they use. Part A. Idioms in Action. Part 1. Hey, Stephen. So what's the word? Are you going to go for the sales director position? Have you talked to Bonnie yet? Well, I'm not sure. I'm still mulling it over. But I heard Larry say he was going for the job and that he was sure he was a shoe in for the position. That kind of took the wind out of my sails. I don't know. What's your take on the situation? Listen, Larry talks a big game but has nothing to back it up. Plus, he's a bit wet behind the ears when it comes to managing people. Maybe, but I want to be sure that I'll get the position before I ask. I don't want anyone to get the idea I'm not content where I am and then be stuck here. I hear you. People in the same boat have been canned before, or at least passed up for promotion later on. Exactly. The thing is, I really need this new job. I'm earning peanuts now, and with the baby, I just can't seem to make ends meet. Plus, there are some things that need to be fixed on the house, and problems with the car that I've let sit on the back burner for ages. I just can't afford to do that anymore. Part B. Take a closer look. Okay, let's stop there. So far, you've heard these expressions. Listen to each explanation and then repeat the example for practice. To take the wind out of someone's sails. To take away someone's enthusiasm or hope for something. Stephen was excited about the possibility of getting the job. When he'd heard someone else might get it, he was disappointed. When he heard that Larry might get the job, it took the wind out of his sails. A take on something. An opinion or interpretation of something. Stephen wants to know what Brad thinks about his chances of getting the position. He wants to know Brad's take on the situation. To talk a big game. To exaggerate one's abilities or powers. When Larry talks about himself, he makes himself look more competent than he really is. Larry talks a big game. To back something up. To support, to lend evidence or strength to something. John can't prove that his neighbor vandalized his car. He has nothing to back up his suspicions. To be wet behind the ears. To be inexperienced or new at something. Larry doesn't have a lot of experience as a manager. When it comes to management, Larry is a bit wet behind the ears. In the same boat. In the same situation. Employees who express unhappiness with their current job have been fired in the past. Stephen does not want to find himself in the same situation as them. He doesn't want to be in the same boat as them. To be or get canned. To be or get fired. At Stephen's office, when someone shows discontent with their job, they sometimes get fired. They sometimes get canned. To pass up for something. To fail to consider for something or to grant a reward for something. Nate quit his job after the company passed him up for a promotion. To earn peanuts. To earn very little money. Stephen doesn't make much money in his current job. Right now, he is earning peanuts. To make ends meet. To earn enough money to pay for one's expenses. Stephen cannot seem to find enough money to pay for the monthly bills. He cannot seem to make ends meet. To be on the back burner. To be put off. To not be taken care of immediately. Stephen has postponed fixing his car. He has put it on the back burner. Before we continue to listen in as Stephen seeks advice about the new position from Brad, let's focus on some of the other important expressions that they will use. Listen for them and try to remember what they mean. To be a match made in heaven. To be perfect together. 
French fries and ice cream seems like a strange combination, but really they go together perfectly. French fries and ice cream are a match made in heaven. To have someone's name on it. To belong to someone, to be the logical or rightful property or achievement of a particular person. Jordan was furious when he didn't get the account rep position. He thought that job had his name on it. To get or have someone where you want him or her. To maneuver someone into a position or situation that benefits you. Paolo hates rock concerts, but because he feels bad about breaking my camera, the time is perfect to ask him to go with me to one this weekend. Because he feels bad, I have him right where I want him. To be hard pressed. To be pressured by extreme necessity to do something. With quarter end coming up, everyone in the office feels a lot of pressure to meet their monthly quotas. They all feel hard pressed to meet their quotas. To fill a slot. To hire a person for an open or available position. When Enzo left the company, it took three months to fill the slot of senior VP. To have your ducks in a row. To have everything orderly and planned out. If you are going to take out a mortgage, you should examine your finances and make sure everything is in order. Before applying, you should have all your ducks in a row. To step up to the plate. To volunteer yourself, to act responsibly in a time of need. Working in a team requires you to know when to let others take charge and when it is your turn to step up to the plate. To have your fingers in too many pies. To be committed to too many goals or projects. If Manolo feels stressed, it is his own fault. He has committed himself to doing too much. He has his fingers in too many pies. To take on. To make yourself responsible for something, to agree to an obligation. With Chiara in the hospital, it's up to the rest of us to make up for her absence at work. So we decided that each person will take on another shift. To jump the gun. To do something too early, to act too quickly. When dealing with potential customers, I always try to make sure they are convinced of my product before I ask them for a sale. If I ask before I know they are convinced, I could lose the sale. If I jump the gun, I could lose the sale. To take the bull by the horns. To approach a situation directly and with determination. If you want to advance as a salesman, Ken, you have to be assertive and proactive. Don't be afraid to take the bull by the horns. To put your best foot forward. To present your best attributes and qualities. Tonight, the president of the company will meet with all of the interns for dinner. Even though it's a social event, they will be sure to present themselves as competent and professional. They will be sure to put their best foot forward. Part C Idioms in Action. Part 2. Okay, now that we've focused on a few more expressions, let's listen in on the rest of Stephen and Brad's conversation. Well, if you ask me, you and that job, a match made in heaven. That job has your name on it. You'd be perfect for it. It wouldn't be like a new job at all, it'd be more like a promotion. And you've definitely got Bonnie where you want her. Jolie left, and they're hard pressed to fill the slot quickly. And you've got all the qualifications. Go tell Bonnie that you want that job. Yeah, I just want to make sure I've got all my ducks in a row before I step into her office. What ducks? You need more money. You'd be good at the job. All you've got to do is step up to the plate. Well, there's also the issue of my family life. I already have my fingers in too many pies. I worry that I won't be able to take on more responsibility. It will mean more to take home at night. Okay. And I don't want to jump the gun. I mean, there's always a good and a bad time to do these things, and that position won't actually be open for another three months. Listen, there's no time like the present. You know what your obstacle in this is? You're not assertive enough. 
They need someone. Just take the bull by the horns, march in there, and present yourself for the position. Do you really think so? Absolutely. Put your best foot forward. Remember, bull, horns, go for it. Part D. Now it's your turn. Now, are you ready to practice? First, listen to some situations. Then complete the sentences with an appropriate expression from this lesson. Hector takes classes, volunteers, works full time, and plays saxophone in a jazz band. Hector is involved in too many things. He has his fingers in too many pies. Jason's boss told him that he absolutely had to finish the report by Wednesday. Jason feels enormous pressure to finish the report. He feels hard pressed to finish the report. Doreen's boss was going to offer her a ten thousand dollar raise, but Doreen marched into his office and demanded a five thousand dollar raise first. Doreen acted too quickly. She really jumped the gun. No matter how many hours she works, Cecily can't seem to keep up with her monthly car payments and other bills. No matter how she tries, she can't. Make ends meet. Nero doesn't let insecurity or fear stop him. When he has a problem, he faces it head on and tries to solve it. He knows how to take the bull by the horns. Simona was hoping to take piano lessons. When she found out how much they cost, she wasn't so enthusiastic about them anymore. Finding out how much piano lessons cost really. Took the wind out of her sails. Now listen for the expressions in each situation, and then restate them in other words. George's most important task for now is to find an apartment. He has put all the other projects on the back burner. In other words, all other projects are less important right now. Nigel says he can hook Marlene up with a great new stereo at a discount, but she shouldn't depend on that because he generally talks a big game without delivering. In other words, Nigel exaggerates about what he is able to do. The other ice skaters in the tournament are really much better than Stanford. The most he can do is go out there and put his best foot forward. In other words, the best Stanford can do is. Try hard and present himself as well as he can. Michael's coworkers think he's very promising, but he makes some mistakes because he's still wet behind the ears. They think that Michael is still inexperienced. We've come to the end of lesson eighteen. Take the bull by the horns. You can go back and review by listening again, or you can move on to the next lesson if you're ready.